Back Autobots, Decepticons, and everything in between to another episode of Fixing Transformers. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at how Galvatron became Megatron in Transformers The Last Night. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So as a brief recap, in Transformers Age of Extinction, Megatron was rebuilt into the Galvatron body by KSI, which he would eventually take over along with the many KSI prototypes, in hopes of stealing the cyberforming seed to rebuild a massive army. But when his plan failed at the end of the film, we heard him say that he'll meet the Autobots once more, and that it was reborn. But once the last night comes around, Galvatron is nowhere to be seen, with Megatron taking his place. So now we need to solve what happened to Galvatron and how Megatron got a new upgraded body. And well, before I explain all this, I highly recommend that you guys watch my KSI video, since this video is working directly off of that one, with a lot of the concepts I'll be using being explained in that video, along with Nachozu's origins, since it explains how Transformium reverts back to its original state. But for everyone who's already watched those videos, let's get to it. So to solve the question on what happened to Galvatron after Age of Extinction, we have to take a look at what Megatron looks like in Transformers The Last Night. And as we see, he's in a completely new body that resembles a knight, along with him having a red mark on his face. Now this red mark is important because it's the mark of the goddess Quintessa. We know it's Quintessa since she gave a similar mark to Optimus. So his info alone tells us that Megatron somehow beat Optimus to Quintessa, which would require him to travel through space to get there. But as we know, the Galvatron body can't fly, so how is this possible? Well, remember how I stated in my KSI video along with my Nitro Zeus video that transforming him over time revert back to its original state, giving the KSI boss a regular transformation, overall getting rid of their blocky KSI transformations, which is what Galvatron had. So with that in mind, at least to the conclusion that Galvatron have a normal transformation instead of a block-like one following the events after the Hong Kong battle. Now this is important because he would be able to scan vehicles once more, letting him to be able to turn into a flying vehicle and leave Earth. Now before I move on, I want to put in place this next point, since it'll come into play for the whole theory. As you know in Transformers Age of Extinction, Megatron's plan was to steal the seed and use it to replace the army that he lost in Dark of the Moon. And as we know, that plan failed. And as I said before in my Nitro video, Megatron would group any surviving KSI bots to be used as a makeshift army. So we know that Megatron's plan of rebuilding the army that he lost in Dark of the Moon is still going through his mind. And the first phase of that goal is to recruit any survivors from the Hong Kong battle. And due to there not being many survivors, Megatron would send a message out to any surviving Decepticons amongst the stars, along with on Earth to regroup with him. That is why Barricade is back, since he's been hiding on Earth ever since Cemetery Wind was formed. And I have a video on Barricade coming soon, so stay tuned for that. Now this message would also get the attention of Onslaught, Dreadbot, and Berserker, who are hiding on Earth ever since the Decepticons fell into ruins after the Battle of Chicago, along with Mohawk who came to Earth thanks to Megatron's call. Now once the Decepticons started to come in, it still wasn't enough for Megatron. He still craved for a bigger army, and to do that he needed the Seed, which could cyberform any material in the Transformium, letting him to create a massive army out of it. And since he heard about Lockdown getting his Seed supplied by the creators when he was stuck as a head at KSI, Megatron would come up with a plan to search for his creators in hopes of getting a Seed from them. He knew that he could not fly, but thanks to the Transformium hailing him back to be able to transform regularly, it would allow him to be able to scan vehicles again. Now at this point in time I speculate that Megatron made a Decepticon base somewhere in Hong Kong, since that's where he was last seen. And since he knew that the Autobots were going to go back to the States with the Jaeger family, this would lead to slim to non Autobot resistance when building up his army, since the Autobots were on a completely different continent. So with that out of the way, Megatron would go ahead and scan a new vehicle. I would presume that he would go to a military base station in Hong Kong, trash it, and scan a fighter jet to be his new vehicle form, since he would need a flying vehicle if he wanted to leave Earth. Now the fighter jet would not be the one that we saw in the last night, since he's still in the Galvatron body. His robot mode would more or less look like Galvatron of jet parts on it. Now you may be wondering when Optimus scanned his Western Star Truck, he could change his appearance to look like a knight. So why can Megatron not do the same? Well as I said before, Megatron is in the Galvatron body, so he cannot access his schematics to look like a previous version of himself. But Optimus on the other hand was able to since he was in his own body. And since he had that knight form sometime in the past, most likely due to scanning that knight statue that looks a lot like him, when he scanned his new Western Star Truck, he activated his knight schematics to look different. So that out of the way, Megatron went back to his Decepticon camp and put Barricade temporarily in charge of the Decepticons, while he would go search for his creators in hopes of getting a seed to be used to create a massive army. Now the reason why Barricade would be in charge instead of Nitro would be because Barricade has been an OG member of the Decepticons since 2007, hence why Megatron would trust him the most to lead the Decepticons while he was gone. And with that, he would say farewell to Decepticons, saying that he'd be back with a seed in short time. And with that, he would blast off into space in hopes of finding his makers. Now you may be wondering how a fighter jet from Earth can fly in outer space. And well, normally they cannot, but if a Cybertronian chooses it as their vehicle form, it gets upgraded, letting it to be able to fly higher and faster than a normal version. This is proven because Starscream is able 
able to fly in outer space. And a max altitude of an F-22 Raptor is 65,000 feet. And if you want to get into outer space, you need to exceed 300,000 feet, which is a 235,000 foot difference. And we saw Starscream to be able to pass it. So with that out of the way, it shows how Megatron could be able to fly in outer space with no problems whatsoever. Now next thing we need to establish is how Megatron was able to be prime to Cybertron. And in movie continuity, Age of Extinction and The Last Night are set five years apart, setting The Last Night no later than 2022. And we know that Prime lands on Cybertron in 2022, when Megs has already been there and back, since he's been seen on Earth for some time thanks to the TRF surveillance. So how is this possible? Well, if you remember, sometime after Optimus set off to find his creators, he went into stasis and froze up, drifting through space until he would land on Cybertron. Megs, on the other hand, did not go into stasis, and powered his way through the whole journey. And thanks to him having a jet form, it would let him get to his destination quicker than Prime. But now the question is, how did Megatron know to go to Cybertron to find his creators? And well, the answer is that he did not, and here is why. Megatron did not have any sense of direction to where the creators could be, so he took a guess and went into the path of his homeworld, Cybertron. He also did this out of curiosity to see if Cybertron still existed after it was sucked into the wormhole when Sentinel Prime's pillar was destroyed. And just like Optimus, Megatron would be surprised that it still existed. Since if you remember in Dark of the Moon, both Optimus and Megatron looked at Cybertron when it collapsed in on itself, with Prime lowering his head out of respect and Megatron being dumbfounded that it was finally gone. And due to Megatron thinking that Cybertron was destroyed, that's why he proposed a truce, since he had nothing left to fight for. No. We need a truce. All I want is to be back in charge. So seeing that Cybertron still existed, Megatron decided to investigate. This is where we come face to face with the goddess Quintessa. Now something to know of Quintessa, she can sense things to a degree. This is proven when she sends Vivian Wembley, the only other being that can control her staff. There is only one who can hurt us. I felt her. She must not enter. She also knew that Optimus was searching for his creator. I've been waiting for you, Optimus. Come meet your maker. So I believe once Megatron land on Cybertron, Megatron hears something along the lines of, I've been waiting for you Megatron, come claim your seed. Now the reason why she said this to Megs was to hook him in and spark his interest, which is what she would eventually do to Prime, by putting out the fact that she was a creator. But for Megatron's case a seed, this would lead Megatron to go to the ignition chamber, where he would meet Quintessa. And Megatron being Megatron would attempt to grab Quintessa, demanding for the seed. But Contessa knowing about his true intentions would chain him up like she would eventually do to Optimus. This would obviously take Megatron off, for him to say that nobody enslaves Megatron. Quintessa would respond with that I created you and that you are mine to command. And slap Megatron across the face, giving him a red mark. This would cause Megatron to settle down and listen to what Quintessa would have to say. She would explain to him how Cybertron was dying and if he wanted to live on, Megatron would have to find her staff of power, which are 12 Guardian Knights so long ago. And if Megatron succeeded in this task, she would grant Megatron a new army. Now though this is never stated in the film, it can be proven because once Megatron gave the staff to Quintessa, a mini Decepticon army appears, with Decepticon fighter jets and Decepticon protoforms, the ones that we saw in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Now the reason why Quintessa brought the point of saving the Cybertronian race is because she knew that was Megatron's main goal throughout his life. There's proof because in all the films, Megatron's plan revolves around repairing Cybertron, so it would be able to sustain life again. In Transformers 2007 was by using the Allspark to restore life. In Revenge of the Fallen, the Sun Harvester, which could be used to create enough Energon to repair Cybertron, along with giving it to the Hatchlings, so they could fully develop into adult Cybertronians. In Dark of the Moon was to bring Cybertron Earth, and use Earth's resources to rebuild Cybertron. And in Age of Extinction was to use the seed to create a massive army to defeat the Autobots, since Autobots led to Cybertron's downfall. So by saying this, it would ensure that Megatron would help her get her staff back. Now, maybe wondering why Contessa did not put Megatron under mind control. Now, the reason why is because Megatron's goals align with hers. They both want to repair and bring back life to Cybertron. And once you would tell Megatron about Unicron and how he was Earth, it would make Megatron's hatred towards the planet and its inhabitants even greater. Unlike in Optimus' case, where it grew attached to humans and their planet. That's why she would have to put a spell over him to carry out Unicron's destruction. Now, let's move on to the question everyone's been asking how do he get his new body? And well, if everything so far, Quintessa is the only answer. But why would she give Megs a new body? Well, the reason why I think she did this was because Megatron, like Optimus, Optimus was one of her many creations. And thanks to KSI, Megatron got combined with human technologies, overall disgracing him. And she'd feel bad for Meg since he didn't look like himself anymore. More or less, think about it like this. You create a game that you've been working on for years, dumping your heart and soul into it, and one day somebody decides to change it up and flips it on his head into a completely different entity. That's how Quintessa felt when she saw Megatron. And Megatron also did not like the Galvatron body, since it did not look like him, but it was way better than being a lonely head at KSI. So to fix this, Quintessa decided to reformat Megatron and give him a new upgraded body that resembled a knight, along with the characteristics of Megatron. And to further prove this point, when Optimus meets Quintessa for the first time, you can see that he's clearly battle damaged, with him still having a stab wound in his chest that he got from lockdown. But later in the film, he's all fixed with no damage whatsoever. This leads me to conclude that Quintessa fixed him up, which shows that she cares about her creations, and why she would go out of her way to give Megatron a new body. Now, the reason why Megatron's body looked like a knight was mainly because of Quintessa's aesthetic choices, since all the Infernicons look like knights, along for 12 Guardian Knights that she created long ago. So clearly, she has a thing for knights. 
Now, the last topic I'd like to talk about is, why was Megatron's alternate form a Cybertronian jet? And the reason it's a jet is because due to him scanning one earlier before he met Quintessa, that alternate mode schematic would convert into a Cybertronian version once Megatron got his new body, becoming the alternate mode for that design. And just like that, that's how Megatron got his new body in Transformers The Last Night. But before I go, I'd like to give a quick word to today's sponsor, Raycon. Now, Raycon offers some of the best wireless earbuds that you can find on the market. They come in many fun and crazy colors that truly pop, and they are also very comfortable. As a bonus, they come with a whole different set of fit options to fit any size ear. The case itself can charge the Raycons with the four times in a single charge, and the best part is that the Raycon earbuds start around half the price as any other premium wireless earbud, and sound just as good at the same time. Raycons are very good for when you want to listen to music or just dance, or in my case, at a Transformers video. Now their everyday E25 earbuds are the best model yet. With 6 hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, and a more compact design that gives you a noise isolating fit. Now I've been using their everyday E25s for a little bit now, and I have to say that I'm very impressed. My most favorite part was the Bluetooth pairing. I only had to press one button on my phone and the Raycons were ready to go. I gotta say that the setup was very fast, easy, and reliable. So I would definitely recommend this to anybody who's looking for some fresh new wireless earbuds. And if you check out the link in the description, you can now get them for 15% off by using my link, buyraycon.com slash trans theories. And I want to say thank you to Raycon for sponsoring this video. And with that out of the way, that's how Galvatron became Megatron in Transformers The Last Night. And well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you haven't already, check out the Fixing Transformers playlist for some more awesome theories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. It means a lot and it keeps my channel running. So a big fat thank you to you guys. And as always, if you enjoyed this theory in the Fixing Transformers collection, please give a like rating because it helped the channel a lot. And as always, it's been Trans Theories reminding you guys to never stop theorizing.